Getting sick, it's the worst. Sometimes when you get sick, it causes you to talk funny. Sometimes it makes you start a drug empire. But in today's villain's case, he says, Oh, you're gonna kill me? Well, not if I can kill me first. Villain review. Earlier this week, I analyzed Venom and gave him a score 1 out of 10. And today, Craven, it's your turn, buddy. Who's the better villain? Are these jabronis better than Doc Ock? Can Craven get included in the best villains around playlist? Time to find out. You grow slow in your old age, Sergei. A fate you will not share. Living in the deep Amazon forest of Russia, Sergei Kravinov leads a pack of hunters under the name Craven. And when he's diagnosed with a life ending sickness, he decides he doesn't want that to be the way he goes out. He wants to go out in combat as a warrior against someone who's truly his equal. He has a hard time with this at first, hunting down just like his interns and his water boys, but when they can't do Jack Diddley against him, he says, You know what's better than the actual jungle? The concrete jungle. And for some reason, starts with like the B-team villains like Vulture. Once that doesn't work out, he ends up setting his sights on the now symbioted up Spidey and says, you're gonna kill me whether you like it or not. In the Insomniac franchise, every main villain seems to be dealing with sickness, but Kraven stands out for the fact he's the only one who is trying to die. We've seen this kind of warrior mindset before of only wanting to die in battle, and I'm not sure if that's always like his wave since I don't know that much about Kraven from the comics, but I like this motive a lot. It's made even even more interesting by the comments he makes in the game about his frustration with his body betraying him. And as the game goes on, you really get to feel that sense of urgency and desperation, him really wanting to accomplish this goal. It's a great motive that really adds a lot to his character and personality, and I really enjoy that. His name is Kurt Connors. He's a good man. There are no good men. Only good prey. The good thing about Craven is that he's not a good guy. What I mean by that is while one could argue he's just taking out bad guys, and if, and if you want to die, like a crazy person, I mean, by all means, it's your life, buddy. While one could argue he's just doing his own thing, he's really not. Because on this quest to get himself killed, he invokes so much pain and destruction onto those people that might be his equal, as well as just tons of random New Yorkers who haven't done anything wrong aside from just like upselling Broadway tickets. There is absolutely no regard for human life or emotion or anything outside of his own goal. And that, my friend, is messed up. It's this selfish attitude and many other character traits that really solidify this guy's a villain. There's some version of this character that I'm sure tries to paint Craven as a sympathetic guy, but this game knows he's a villain and they treat him like it. His sickness helps his character by showing his motive, but that's it. Never in the game does the story try and make you feel bad for Craven, and I really like that. I think it helps him a ton as a villain. Another great thing about Craven is how the game sets him up to not only be a physical threat, but an intellectual one. Both he and Venom are the physical threats, but while Venom attacks also the emotional side, Craven attacks the intellectual one. And we see this through his wide array of battle planning and strategies. There are so many moments in this game where you feel like Craven is just several steps ahead, baiting Miles to escape just so he can gladiator fight Martin Lee is one of the best examples. Aside from his goal of getting got, I like seeing Craven's mind at work, trying to learn more about potential opponents or just combat in general. Several scenes in this game, you can see him thinking things through and learning about what's going on. An amazing way to show us more about Craven's character. His curiosity and observation over all these years in battles and prey, those are the things that formed him into the hunter we see in this game. It is sweet as hell and makes Craven a really interesting and dynamic character. Huge props to Insomniac for cooking with this one. But you still hold back. Kill or be killed. 
When it comes to the villains in this game, Venom is of course the golden boy, the poster child. But Kraven is the villain responsible for holding things down for most of this game. He gets the game started, he keeps it moving, and even brings about its close. And it's this relevance throughout the game that makes Kraven, I think, as memorable as he is. Both Spider-Man games have an intro villain and a final villain. One of them works really well, and the other one's Martin Lee. The problem with Lee as a first half villain is his story is connected to Otto, sure, kinda, but also not really. Without everything going on with Devil's Breath and the hidden demons, Otto would still make the arms, he'd still hate Norman, and would probably still end up being Doc Ock. In Spider-Man 2, if Kraven doesn't come to town, Martin Lee would never get out and resolve this now three game long arc with Miles. Peter would never get the symbiote suit and the symbiote would probably never stop being Agent Venom, never mutating into big scary Venom. Sure, the symbiote's still a problem nonetheless, but it shows Kraven is one of, if not the most important character in this game as far as inciting action. Let's talk some actual scenes though, because when it comes to getting the most out of his screen time, I'd understand if people were a little split on it, especially in the first half of this game. I personally, I'm cool with how they use Kraven in the first half, okay? It is a lot of buildup though, a lot of him snarling at our spiders from a distance while his goons are out doing all the work. Maybe, yeah, they could have given him one or two more scenes in the first half, but it's set up, I get it. And it's pretty damn good setup, if you ask me, because the payoff in the second half is incredible. The real first Kraven scene that is noteworthy is when he falls in love with the symbiote and whoops Peter's ass all in the same scene. No better way to show how tough a villain is than to have him just whoop our hero. Showing the audience that base level Peter can't beat Kraven on his own. Something that also sets up Peter's reliance on the symbiote because I think there's some real fear there. A fear that without the symbiote, Peter can't beat Kraven, which is also 100% true. It's barely even a fight since Peter hardly gets hit before Kraven essentially kills him. It's a great scene with great atmosphere that beautifully plants the seeds for the second half of this game. There are a lot of other good Kraven scenes in this game as well, but none that stick out to me as much as the ones at the end. The fight between him and symbiote Peter is pretty great. The atmosphere is awesome and I love seeing Kraven as a fighter in action, taking advantage of the symbiote's weaknesses and using it against Peter in the fight. When a boss fight can give us more insight into a character without dialogue and just use the mechanics of the boss fight, that in my opinion is one of the hardest things to pull off in a game and this one does it so well. Peter eventually beats Kraven, but because Miles is a jerk, interfering, Kraven doesn't get that sweet, sweet death he's been craving so much. Luckily, one of the best scenes in this game steps up to the plate in the form of Kraven versus Venom, and hot damn, genuinely one of the best and most memorable things about this game's story. Kraven is still beat up and bruised from his fight with Peter, but with the symbiote out and on the loose, the hunter takes him on and truly finds it's funny, he never found an equal, he just found someone better than him. What's great about this fight is Kraven is clearly outmatched here, but his effort and drive shines through all the same. Venom largely dominates this fight, but not without Kraven getting in some really good shots. Again, an amazing feat of storytelling and character work through gameplay. Kraven wants to lose this fight, but he's also not holding back. And seeing these two pinnacles of strength go up against each other is awesome. One of my favorite moments in the entire franchise. One of my favorite moments in a game in just a long time. What I like about Kraven is that he isn't just an appetizer villain we have to fight until Venom's ready to step up. He is a fully fledged villain of his own with an interesting motive and character. The performance is great and I love how important Kraven is to the story. It really helps make him a memorable and important character in this thing. The build up in the first half of this game might be a little too slow for some, but his role in the second half and those awesome boss fights in particular are just top tier everything. I'm gonna give Kraven the Hunter an 8.5. What are you? Trek the lizard. The spider is mine. Thank you so much for watching. New villain review every single Monday. Let me know who I should review next. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.